What's going on YouTube? This is Jay Ski, and I'm back with another one. So, today we'll be discussing about the branches and the 10 things you should know before you join the military. You know, uh, I got all everything down on my notes. So, if you catch me looking down, I got everything on my notes. But, you know, I want to first start off saying that do not, um, do not dis do not get discouraged of joining any branches, and um, I feel like do what's best for you. For you, don't go off of somebody else's opinion, nor do not go and without without a clear mindset. Basically, what I mean when I say with a clear mindset is you're just doing it just to do it, and or wishy washy. Do your research before going in. And this is why I'm here today to uh, discuss the 10 things that you should know before joining the military. So the first thing would be, pick it up, first thing would be the commitment and the contracts that you will be signing. I don't want to say your life away, but that you're guaranteed to serve. So um, if you see yourself doing long term, I say start off with like the shortest contract. I believe they're still doing two years, but when I first uh, signed my first contract, I did about three years and uh, 30 weeks, and that was the smallest contract I did based off of my MOS, but um, every branch is different. I am in the Army, so like I said, every branch is different, so don't go off of my opinion or don't go off of my contract this um do your research um and also um i didn't i didn't get told this when i went to mips about like the active duty the reserve the national guard you know know your options out there you know after duty is where you're going to be stationed in a different state and you're going to be there throughout your whole contract yes you'll be able to go and leave but you're there 24-7 if you're not on leave. Now, National Guard and Reserve, you're able to go home, and basically they call them weekend warriors. And you'll be able to go home and just go to drill uh, every, every uh, not every weekend, but once a weekend every month. And then I believe in the summertime, it's two weeks. So, you know, if you guys really want to, uh, to max out your benefits, what I'll talk about later on through this video, then I feel like the, my opinion, best choice to go with is active duty. Um, number two is basic training. So I highly recommend that if you guys are joining any branch to see the, the test requirements. Um, in the Army, it's called ACFT, when they have a lot of drills and um, a lot of, what is the word I'm looking for? A lot of events for that test. I know in other branches that the test is not that long. And there's not a lot of events. But just to get a, a jump start so you won't be going in cold turkey, I say work on your two mile, your push-ups and, um, push and sit-ups. Then you be, uh, everything else is a cakewalk to me. And it should be a cakewalk to you as well too. But... Just know that before going to basic training, or before going to MEPS, just, um, you know, go to the gym, eat healthy, um, yeah, and just, just be prepared that it's going to be a, a lot of running. It depends on what job you pick. It's going to be a lot of running. So choose your job wisely. And also, if you get airborne in your contract, I don't want to jump the gun. This this tip: if you have airborne in your contract, this note you're gonna be running a lot. Um, and also, um, be prepared that during boot camp, you're only eating three meals a day: breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You're being told when to eat. Went to sleep, 
and when to take a shower. You still you still get all of those, but just remember at the end of the day, they can't starve you, they can't kill you, and they have to let you rest somewhere. So, but other than that, when you get that in your head, it's gonna be a cakewalk. Cakewalk. Um. Yeah, it's just the only thing I can say to prepare for the ACFT and the PT test. Other than that, it's gonna be like a lot of obstacles. I don't know how to help uh, prepare you for that, but you can. Um, I could do a video on that next. Um, the type of obstacles you can do, or that you're going to do in boot camp, as well as you're going to be going to the range. So if you know how to shoot, good. If you don't, they'll teach you. They teach you the land nav. They'll teach you what else? Oh, you're going to the gas chamber. So it's a whole lot. Oh, if you don't know what the MRE is, a meal ready to eat, that's in the package. And that will humble you. I'm talking about when you go to the field and spend the night out there, yeah, you're not going to get no uh, top shelf food and warm food and stuff like that. Well, take that back. You are going to get warm food, but it's not going to be wine and dine. You're going to have to heat up the food that's in the package. But it's good. I ain't going to lie. I ain't gonna, I, you see, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm talking about I am still here. And um, depending on what branch you pick, when you go to the field during the uh, basic training, you'll be sleeping outside. You'll be sleeping outside. I don't know about the <coughs> Navy, <coughs> Air Force. I don't know about them, but I, I was told that they don't sleep outside. Teacher's own. But uh, in the Army, I know I, I slept outside for a couple of days. Um, we did ruck, we, we ruck, did work marches. If y'all don't know what ruck marches is, is where in civilian terms, we'll have a backpack that is weighed 35 pounds and we'll ruck 12 miles. It's doable. You think it's not doable, but it's doable. Number three, well, I've just been chatting. But number three, uh, military lifestyle and culture. So um, it's not OD, but when you get out of basic training and AIT, like it's, it's like a whole different lifestyle. Your lingo will change. You'll talk different. You'll walk different. Uh, some people have great posture at the end. You'll be disciplined. Um, Definitely, uh, the biggest thing is walking and talking on your phone in uniform. Mm mm. Mm mm. Well, somebody, <laughs> you'll get humbled real quick. I, <laughs> on top about chew, chew the fuck up, you on top about you get it. But try it. Watch. You'll see what happens. Or you'll, you, if, if that, if you, if you try it and nothing happens to you or, you you trust and believe you'll see somebody else do it and watch them get fucked up for it. Watch them. Um, what else? Um, adapting to the military. I'm saying that if you accept everything with the military comes, it'll be a smooth transition from a civilian into a, a soldier. Or or any other branch. I know Marines don't like being called soldiers. So whatever branch you uh, decide to go into, if you give it your hundred percent, it will be a smooth transition. Um, some of the uh, some of the things that I took out of it is like great teamwork. Um, I'm able to adapt into it in any environment I'm in. I'm put in. I could be in a fast paced environment for my job. I'm a nine to Romeo. Pressure rigor, so that's a fast tempo job. Um, you could put me in a field; I'll I, I, I'll be able to, you know, adjust to that. Um, yeah. So discipline, you know, um, it's tough. Um, I, I don't want to say like the some of the branches my might argue with this, but it might feel like a um, it might feel like like a high school in some branches. 
but other than that, like it's really discipline. It's uh, you, what you get. You be structured, and you. I could say you could be. You would be the best you that you never knew that you had in you. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! That boy is singing. So career opportunities. That's number four. Four is career opportunities. So, this is my, like I said, I'm a 9 to Romeo. So, my advice to you guys is that before you sign that dotted line to join the military, and this goes with any branch, any branch, before you sign your name on that dotted line, make sure that job is something that you can see yourself doing long term. Not just, oh, I think I could do it for this first contract. Huh? No, excuse me. See, if you can see yourself doing that for like 20 years plus, if you know you're not going to stay in for 20 years, but you're just going to do it uh, for your first contract, see how it goes, at least do something that you enjoy and also pick a job that you can use in the civilian world. It's easy to transfer your skills. So, use me for example. I messed up picking my job. I'm a 9 to Romeo and... It's, it's, I'm not going to say it's hard to find something in the civilian world because there is jobs for us, but it's not my type of job that I want to do. I, like, I wouldn't want to get out the Army being a, as a parachute rigger to continue doing parachute rigger stuff in the civilian world. Like, now if I was a 42 Alpha, which is a human resource, bro, bro. You can go anywhere you want. You can do anything you want. Plus, you have a military background. Human, bro, that is a great, great job. Supply, that is a great job, too. Um, it's, I can make, I'm going to make a video on that, too. With great jobs to pick. That's easy, that's easy to transfer to the civilian side. But just make sure that when you are picking your job, pick something that is related to the civilian world or that will help you get, like, certs. Or like, you know, a step forward in your degree. And I'll talk about that down low. Or not down low, but, you know, and further down in the video. But just make sure you pick a great job, you know, something. And also, um, they might not tell you or not, but see if you, if you want to get airborne, try to get airborne in your contract. If you want to go to RAS, if you want to be a ranger, make sure you try to get that in your contract. If you want to go to aerosol, make sure that's in your contract before you sign. Cause they can give it to you before you sign, but it's but you have to guarantee to pass uh, base training and AIT, and then you'll go afterwards. And also, oh my God, I cannot stress this enough. I am telling you guys now, I don't know about the other branches, I'm pretty sure the same thing, but I'm letting you guys know now, when you look at that contract, see if you get a bonus. It's a sign-on bonus. You can get a bonus for joining. I mean, it's almost the same thing. Uh, a early shipping date, uh, early shipping bonus. You can get a bonus for going to RAS. You can get a bonus. For, uh, this, this, this. See if you can get a bonus. That, that it doesn't hurt. And the bonus go from from ten, from ten to thirty thousand. Ten to thirty thousand. Why would you pass that up? Why would you pass that? And. And after they pass basic and AIT, you can have the choice of getting like every, um, I think it's every year, you can get like an allotment of it, or you can get that option of getting it all lump sum, but it's gonna get taxed regardless and you get it back during taxes time. But if you can get a, me personally, I got a bonus. I'm not gonna tell you how much I got, but I got a bonus when I join, and I got a bonus for re enlisting. Two times I got bonus twice. So you can do the same thing as well too. But, and I got it all at once. I, I needed that. I'm talking about I deserved all that. I'm talking about I, want, I didn't want it every, every year. I wanted all, as soon as I finished all my training, give me all that. So, I advise you for you guys to do the same thing. See if you can get the bonus. All right, next. Ooh, I'm burning on five. Five is education uh, benefits. 
So joining any branch, you get education benefits. Um, speaking about the Army, we have, uh, we have got TA, tuition assistance. And as of right now, last time I checked, it was about 4000 a year. And that is free. Basically, they're paying 4000 of your college classes a year. So why not take advantage of that? I didn't know what I know now. And I'm in my second contract. If I knew what I knew now in my first contract, I would have done it already. But, you know, it's slow and steady running the race. So, you know, it's better to do something than better to do. Better than, it's better to do something than nothing. So I still did it in my second contract. And I'm fast tracking. So I use my TA. And if you guys need help, sign up for TA. Comment down below or send me a message. And I'll help you out. I'll walk you step by step and everything how to do it. But I use my TA and I got my associate's degree. And by getting my associate's degree, I did the same thing. I did, uh, 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 did the same thing. And I am nine classes away of getting my bachelor's. And that only took me, it would take me, if I after, after I complete both of the degrees, it only take me two years since I got it, or to get my both of the degrees. Yeah. On top about, bro, it's free. It's free. Why not? Why pass it up? You would be a fool to pass that up. And plus, if you don't use it now, then you have a certain amount when you get out. But it's like, bro, you might as well use it now. And plus, you're still going to finish the aid. So it's like, bro, it's like you're getting paid to go to school. Let me, let me, I don't think y'all heard me. I don't think y'all heard me. So you're getting paid by the Army. You get paid by the Army. Boom. And you get paid by the Army again just for going to school. So you get the TA, but you can't pocket the TA. That will go straight into paying off the classes. But since the class is getting paid off by TA, guess what? That financial aid is just going straight to your bank account. Uh, let me let me start dwelling on that. I'm telling y'all, if you need some help with that, please comment down below. I will definitely put you on game. I'm talking about it's free. It's free chili. I'm not gatekeeping. I want everybody to win. I want everybody to be successful. I want everybody to be winners. I want to be able. I want everybody to be able to join any branch they want to join. And if they decide that it's not for them, then they can get out with something to show. I would rather have one everybody that could join and get out with something to show than with nothing to show. Cause you just wasted your time. People outside in the civilian world is paying to go to college struggling to pay to go to college, having loans and stuff like that, and you have the benefit of not having no loans and having somebody pay for it, and you can't pay it on top of that? All right, I'm going to leave it alone. Six, is deployment and time away. So, um, based on your job, yes, you'll get deployed. I heard it's voluntarily and voluntold. So I had to put both of those in there, voluntarily and voluntold. So volunteer is like, you know, if they need people or if they have enough people in it, if you want to volunteer and, and, and get deployed, it's tax-free over there. So if you're really listening, you can get a tax-free bonus. But if you decide to uh, deploy, you get a patch. Uh, um, it depends. My fault. It depends. I'm not even going to speak on it. You, you know, you, it's time away. Yes. If you have family members, you, it's time away from them. But it's kind of, i never been deployed because my job is uh, not deployable. But it's other jobs that if you guys pick, it's deployable. So be prepared. You know, do your research. See if they deploy, don't deploy. If you guys scared, deploy. But don't be scared. You know, you signed up for a reason. But if you really want to deep, uh, dig deeper, um, let me know. Let me know. Or comment down below your MOS or the MOS you're looking into, and message me your, any questions that you have about it, if they're deployable, non-deployable, or you know, if you want more information about them, I can give it I can give it to you. Just let me know down below in the comments. 
Uh, number seven is physical and mental health. So, uh, it's like any other job, you know, some people are built for it, not built for it. So it just depends on you. But mental health is a big thing, you know, and because a lot of people never lived on their own. And joining the military active duty, you will live on your own and have your own barracks room and or you might share a room with somebody and you never shared a room with another stranger before. And it might be, you know, a lot on your mental. Uh, some people get depressed and that's where it starts falling into physical and, you know, be o overweight, can't make, can't make run. And um, what else? Um, depending on your job, that will put a lot of uh, toll on your body. You know, as a pressure rigger, you know, we do a lot of hands-on, um, packing parachutes and jumping. So after a while, you know, some people bump, like not bone, but body starts to ache. And, you know, we're humans, we're not robots. So yes, it'll, you know, start falling into that category of being all profile because you can't do X, Y, Z. You broke something, you fractured something. But then they start getting depressed. And, you know, it, 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 it's like a, so... But it does happen to a lot of people. It just, I'm just saying, like, you know, that's one thing that they don't really tell you about um, at uh, your recruiter or at MEPS that, you know, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a physical and mental health thing. That it's a lot that occurs. Uh, we on eight. We almost there. We almost there. Relax. Relax. We on uh, financial and house of... Uh, yeah, financial and housing benefits. So, like I said, the, the benefits of housing, if you're a single soldier with no kids, you'll live in the barracks. And it's rent-free, uh, electricity, water, everything's covered. You don't have to pay out of pocket. Um, you have a, some people, have, some barracks have stoves. Some, some barracks have just microwave, refrigerator. Um, but, yeah, and then, and then also, um, with families, you can have uh, you can have the opportunity to live off post, and they'll pay you BH, or you can use your BH and have it taken out every month without you even seeing it living on post. Me personally, I live off post, but you know, teach his own, whatever works for you. Um. Also, it's um, the housing allowance was just BH. Um, you get you get free health care, so you can go to any Tricare facility or that that takes Tricare. You can go there. Um, on post is free. You can get seen by every little thing. Like, say if your arm, your pinky fell asleep. You can go seen by that. You don't have to pay. Dental is free. You can get uh, cleaning, a reg basically regular checkup. Everything's free if you um, active duty. But I believe it, if you go reserve and that's the guard, you have to pay like somewhat out of pocket. Don't quote me. I don't know how much out of pocket, but you have to, you will have to pay something out of pocket. But after duty, you ain't got to pay a dime, a dime. You can go every day if you want to, and you don't have to pay nothing. I had to, I had to get a um. Now, you know how people got silver caps. That's kind of like free medical or whatever. But I had got the white, uh, regular tooth color cap, so people had to pay like out of pocket for that, but. It's cool. I'm free. I and mean, for family too, uh, family it's not free, but it's, it'll be less. It'll be less paying for them than a regular civilian paying for their own. If that makes sense. So, don't don't sleep on the benefits now. Do not sleep on the benefits. Nine is transitioning after the service. I have not transitioned out yet. But they do provide a lot of uh, transitioning programs and career transitioning programs, and um, there's stuff that helps. Like this, how they have education benefit. They have like a benefit where you can you can um, six months out or nine months out, 180 days out, you're able to do a internship of like a, any job of your choosing or on a, a job of on their list that they uh, recommend. And it's like an intern to hire. So you have a lot of options, you know. So I feel like if I was to uh, get out, I'd be well taken care of with the 
services they have. But when I do go through that process, I will deep uh, dig deeper into that. And this was number nine, the transition out service. And here we are at the last one. So it's expectations versus reality. So, you know, people think that since we joined the military, we're going to fight a war, this and that. I mean, you signed up to, you know, fight for, a con fight for your country. So, you know, see the bigger picture. Some people, like I said, some people don't get deployed, but you have to see the bigger picture. Um, you know, don't let other people pump your head up. Um, do what you think is right. And so if you're going to join for a certain reason, join for that reason. And you might change your thought when you're in there, and you might have another reason. So, you know, don't let somebody else... Um, don't let somebody else dictate your uh, your choosing. So, you know, um, so I, me me personally, military life is kind of kind of great. It's 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 I transition perfectly fine from a civilian to a soldier. Uh, I'm using all the benefits I can, and I I can't complain. Like yes, uh, all jobs gonna have their ups and downs, but do it outweigh the other? Yes, yes. I'm I, I am taken care of here. I am great. I am great. Well, this is another one. Um, no, it's like the do the rewards. I weigh the bad. In certain, in certain situations, it do. In certain, it doesn't. But I can say one thing that being in the military, it opened a lot of doors for me. And I am grateful to be able to, you know, exp have the experience I have now. And now, instead of me just holding it in and just keeping it to myself, being an NCO, I wanted to be a great leader and share it with everybody else. So if you guys are watching and you think about joining the military, the the 10 things that I just listed down, I'm going uh, to set it up. But the, uh, the 10 things that I listed down, hopefully you guys do more research on that. And if you guys have any more questions about it, feel free to hit me up. I I will answer every text. Um, I'll message you back. And trust me, I'm, I'm not going to, it ain't going to take a week or two weeks. Like, you'll get a same-day response. And I'll answer all the questions you guys have. Um, I'm trying to get everybody, you know, on the same page. And I'm not a recruiter. I just want everybody to eat. You feel me? Eat. So, I, <laughs> I'm, I don't know what else to say. You know, don't get left out. Get up in there and get a play, too. So, but everybody got to eat. So you just remember, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you guys want more, leave a comment down below. Um, in the next video, I should uh, make a video on. And I'll just get back with y'all. Yeet!